The reason you clicked on this video, right, is because you're interested in making games and maybe you just don't know where to start. What I want to do with this video is just give you an idea of where you should begin to actually achieve that. I'm going to go through it with four steps, very basic, and it's going to give you some idea of how you should begin to become a game developer. So if at the moment you're not working or you're stuck at home and you have a lot of free time, then really the conditions couldn't be better for you to start learning how to make your own games. So step one, you're going to need a skill. Now I'm a programmer, I've been a programmer for about 10, maybe like a bit more than that if you consider uni part of that. And I say 10, I meant 10 years. And if you have no experience trying any of these skills, that's a great place to start. If you're into code or you think you might be into code, you should go start doing some programming tutorials and start to see if that's the kind of challenge that you like. If you're into like art, maybe produce some art for a 2D game or something and try to mess around with it in a game engine like Unity or Unreal. Hey, if you're like kind of into music or audio or something like that, pick up like an audio design course, start learning a bit about audio software. There's like infinite resources online on YouTube, on sites like Skillshare or Udemy or any of these things. You know, you can go to any of these places um, and just get access to a course and start learning. I would encourage you to learn a little bit about programming, no matter what skill you choose, for a few reasons. If you're an artist or designer, it's really important to be able to kind of try to communicate your intent through programming sometimes. You don't have to be amazing, you don't have to understand everything about programming, that's the programmer's job after all. But if you're an artist, for example, the best artists I've worked with are usually able to do enough code to express the intent of something that they've created artistically. So I would encourage you to go out there, spend like a couple hours doing like a coding tutorial of some kind, especially a Unity coding. Get used to using other people's code, get used to writing a little bit of your own code or adjusting their code to do what you want it to do, and then implementing that on something that you've made. Once you've done that, you'll have a sense of what a program is doing, and you may have a better sense of just how to talk to a programmer about what you want from them. In my opinion, it doesn't take a lot of time. Anybody who's serious about this uh, can probably learn a pretty substantial amount in like anywhere between 10 and 40 hours, enough that you could probably start actually just programming your own games. And if you look at some of the games that are online, right, um, stuff that's made by like independent people, they're actually just amazingly persistent and they write terrible code all the way through and they make it all the way to the end and publish something. You don't have to be some amazing brilliant coder with like 10,000 hours like they will say, like you just don't need that. You, you can start at a very simple place and build something meaningful that you think is fun and it's a great experience for you and I think that's what you should do. <sighs> Step number two. Find a game engine that connects with you, that connects with your style of how you make things. I'm a Unity developer, I've used it for about eight years, I think. Um, and I think it's good. I mean, the main reason I use it is because I keep getting work in Unity, so I just like keep doing it. It uses C Sharp. Unreal Engine uses visual scripting a fair bit. There's visual scripting tools in Unity. I don't necessarily encourage visual scripting over just normal scripting. There's really like fundamentally not that much difference. You'll have to learn to think the same way no matter whether you're writing a visual script or whether you're just writing text as code and text is far more easy to write. I think don't get too caught up on out of the box how an engine looks um, because most of that is just post-processing effects and you can add that to any of them. If you know, then you can do it. You can make any engine look good just pick one and stick to it for as long as you can because no matter how far you go with that, you're gonna learn something from using that engine. Anyway, step three, start making stuff. Make something really, really, really small. If you can, consider making just something that's like a UI game or just text-based game. Maybe it just has small interactions just with like cubes or something. Maybe you're like just a cube man and you just go around and you collect coins and you can jump and and that's that's really all it has to be. And if you collect all the coins on a level, you can win. That can be where you begin learning about like just controlling logic, you know, writing code, writing code for a larger idea. Because the thing about code is it's constantly written and rewritten as you execute on it. You're going to be wrong when you start out. Your idea is going to be worse than you think it is every time. 
get used to the process of adapting to that. Being a good game developer or designer or whatever is about seeing how your idea is wrong, seeing where your idea fails at the execution level and then adapting to that, changing your idea and making it grow over time. Nobody has like the perfect idea the first time. Start looking around at ways that you can just experiment and build something cheaply. You can use the Unity Asset Store or something like that, or Unreal has a similar uh, marketplace, I think they call it. Um, you can use these things, but don't depend on them like a big crutch. You could look there for inspiration, but just don't get too carried away and buy like every package on the store. What you should do first is look for something free and see if what you can, what you want to try to do can be done with like free assets because that's probably where you should start. Ultimately, professionals usually use just asset store things as like stand-ins for something that's later going to get reworked. You might like grab sound effects from a sound effect library right now, but later you might bring in like an audio engineer to do more sophisticated work. Same with like art, though it sort of depends on what the game is, you know, like if your game is about environments, you're probably going to have the artists of your team uh, build those environments. And if your game's about uh, maybe a character, then the environment stuff could just be asset store things. You don't need a lot of assets. It's only helpful to you if it's inexpensive and within your budget and it serves a direct purpose of what you intend to do now. Don't like buy packages thinking, oh my God, I can make Diablo 4 or something like that. That's not where you should start when you're beginning out. You should just pick a small project and once you think it's small, make it smaller again and so on and so on until you've boiled that down to one single task that you intend to do. Once you've done that, then you can start building up from Step four, start networking with people. There's really good places online. Uh, there's one thing called Unity Connect where you can get on there, you can start looking for people that you could work with. Now, in my opinion, you should first get a skill going and start building some things on your own and get an idea of like what you like doing, what you're good at doing, and how you can contribute to a team. You shouldn't be looking for a team before you're able to build small things on your own. Really, you're gonna have to work with people and I would encourage you that if you do, that you set really small goals for that team. Even though everybody who wants to make a game is usually wildly ambitious, it's really important that you keep the goals really small. Keep your expectations of yourselves and of each other as small as you can because that will, that will still be unrealistic, but at least closer to realistic. The point of this, the point of me being here, is that I just want to... I think games I like the next generation or the next platform for art. So I want to encourage people to just get out there and like make stuff. You can make whatever you want, you can be what, about whatever you want. I, I really think games is like the next place that we can express ourselves. We can express things differently from what could be achieved through like video or through podcasting or, or through say just art on its own, the fact that you interact with it changes it. And I just wanted to kind of bring this channel here or start making videos, start making content, start sharing ideas about game development to encourage as many people as possible to sort of start having a go at it themselves. Because I think everyone from all over the world has their own unique perspectives and experiences. We can literally do anything with games, right? They don't all have to be about shooting something, but they just tend to be. If you like this kind of thing, uh, feel free to subscribe if you think you want more of it. If you're really hanging out for it, you can hit the notification bell thing for those personalized notifications, or even for all the notifications if you want to. If you liked it, hit like. Uh, that's helpful for me, but it's also helpful for you because it'll start bringing you into videos that are more like this type of thing. If you have questions, specific questions about anything I've said that you would like me to elaborate on, just drop it as a comment because that's the point. This is a conversation and I wanted to have this conversation with you, so thank you for coming. I'll catch you next time. I hope I made something just then.